close out this Wednesday night here in the USL Championship from Chukchansi Park in Fresno, California. It's Fresno FC, the Foxes against the Toros, Rio Grande Valley. Josh Eastern and Gary Bailey here with you. Excited for this one on this Wednesday night. Both teams coming off a loss and looking to try to bounce back. They certainly are. Fresno battling to get that second place back. They've lost two of the last three. RGV 15th on back of three straight losses. They need a fantastic run if they're going to make the playoffs. We take a look at the Western Conference standings. Fresno coming in to tonight in third place, just showing you how important this match is tonight. They do have the two games in hand, Fresno. Have a look there, 27 to Reno's 29. But it's RGV in 15th of a lot of work to do if they're going to make those playoffs. Nine points per hand. A San Antonio in 10th spot. We take a look at CJ Cochran. Tonight's matchup of the game brought to you by Onacar Fresno. Onacar Fresno drive with style. 16 sheets this season and one in their meeting with RGV. But he did have an error last week up against Las Vegas Lights that turned the match. And he will know that he needs to perform to a much higher standard for his team tonight. Otherwise, throughout the rest of the season, CJ has been a superstar. On the other side for RGV, Isidro Martinez, the player to watch for the Toros. Yeah, one goal, but six assists, 58 chances created. So much comes through this young man, 22 years of age, a real creative talent in the side, and he'll need to be at his best if RGV are going to have any hope of making the playoffs. And tonight's Road to, vict to Victory, it's brought to you by Travel Shop and Gary Bailey here are the keys. Yeah, for Fresno, 10 games since they last kept a clean sheet. So now is a good time as any. And of course, RGV, when you've got three losses in a row, you've got to end that losing streak. Even a draw will do tonight for RGV. But mind you, they need a win if they're going to have any chance of making these playoffs. So we'll see if both of these teams can get back on track. It's been a tough time on the road for RGV. But tonight, a chance to pull an upset. Lineups and first kick coming up next from Chuck Chansey Park. Back here at Chuck Chansey Park in Fresno. It's Fresno FC and Rio Grande Valley FC. Let's get to tonight's starting lineups. They're brought to you by El Mexicano. We'll start with the home side, coached by Adam Smith. Yeah, for Fresno, Johnson goes out along with Kaffa and Samura. In comes Ali Hadjik, Ellis Hayden, and Kudos Lawal up front. So Lawal and Chavez, that is a potent attack force with Jackson down the right and Elijah Martin down the left. That's a team that's built to score goals. 
And on the other side for RGV, it's probably easier to tell you who's staying in the lineup. Thank you for that, because it does <laughs> make my life a lot easier. Only four stayed. Isidro Martinez, Eric Bird, and in the back, both Junqua and Castellanos. Otherwise, a wholesale changes, including Corti in goals. Nicholas Corti coming in. So, not quite sure what to expect from RGV, but certainly is a revamped team. We'll see what RGV can do here on the road. They just played up at Sacramento a few days ago, but they are here in Fresno tonight and looking trying to get back on track and find their second road win of the season. Just waiting for Brandon Stevis and his whistle will get underway here. It's RGV in orange and it is Fresno, the home side in all blue. And the crowd is ready for this one tonight. There's the whistle underway here from Chuck Chansey Park. It's RGV and it's Fresno. Fresno coming off a 3-1 loss at Las Vegas. While RGV coming in off that 2-1 defeat at Sacramento on Sunday. A bit of a shorter week for RGV, but two straight games here in California for the Toros. And two teams in totally different positions, of course, for Fresno. They're battling to get into second, sitting in third at the moment, but with games in hand. It's been a wonderful season especially if you ignore the last couple of games. Other than that, they've been absolutely brilliant, fantastic at home. Bar GV is sitting 15th. They've got a big job if they're going to make these playoffs, and that job has to start with the win here tonight. Otherwise, their chances are very small. So two teams at sort of different ends of the table. But what we are guaranteed here is an exciting game tonight. And early on, it is the man we featured in the pregame, Isidro Martinez some assistance, not even a minute into the match. It'll be a big loss for the attack of RGV. He cannot continue and it would really shake things up for Gerson Echeverry right at the beginning of this match. He did have a bit of a strapping on when we were focusing on him before the game. Let's have a look and see what happens. Like he went up for that ball and came down and he was hopping a little bit. Mm. Well, is a bit, a bit of a difficulty for Gerson Echeverri if he's going to make a change. You can see the strapping. Look at his left leg, the black strapping all the way down. Maybe you wonder if he wasn't carrying an injury already going into the match, although he's holding his back on this occasion. So if, he, if Echeverri does have to make a change, it's coming very, very early in the game. Well, and that can really change the entire game plan for RGV tonight here on the road. See if he can continue. He's getting worked on by the trainer. Right there at midfield as play gets back underway. We talked with Adam Smith this week about that Las Vegas match. Said they went up 1-0, but then the goalkeeper error gave them some momentum. He just said it kind of happens with the Cochran mistake. He knows this team has to be stronger coming into this match tonight, and especially moving forward with Phoenix coming in here on Saturday. Well, after that mistake by C.J. Cochran, who doesn't make too many mistakes, so then gave away a penalty. But he did tell us an interesting stat that in 60-odd matches since they started this franchise, they've only ever twice been beaten by more than one goal. Curtis the wall into the box. The shot is blocked and it's cleared out of play. And I'll give you both those games. 3-0 to Orange County and the one last week, 3-1 to Las Vegas. Here's tonight's injury report brought to you by Physio Motion. Vasilyevich and Moses are out for Fresno. Nothing to report for RGV. And when Adam Smith told us that stat, I was kind of blown away. I mean, that is remarkable what he has done here in just about two seasons now. Yeah, they're very good defensively, Fresno, and yet no clean sheets for 10 games. And that, Adam said, really, really annoys him. He thinks it's important mentally and psychologically to tick off those clean sheets. So no doubt he would have said to his team in one form or another tonight, I want a clean sheet, I want a victory, I want us to get back on the winning trail, and I want us to get back into second position on that Western Conference table. Let's we'll see how it all plays out tonight. RGV, their second straight game here in California. And they will head back home for Real Monarchs and Orange County the next two weeks. Last five games for RGV, just one, three, and one. They've come in with three straight losses. 
at Austin, Tulsa at home, and then at Sacramento. A tough little stretch for the Toros. They do have a free kick here. Let's see what they can do with the free kick. Decent position. Kurimoto's having a discussion with the ref. And Isidro back on the pitch. But just outside that box, it's a dangerous position. 30 yards out, probably too far for a shot, but a decent ball in the box can cause problems. And let's see if Isidro Martinez can do some of his magic. Six assists on the season. We featured him in the pregame, and he stands over this free kick now here in the fifth minute. He goes for goal, and it hits the wall. It's still there. It's small, and he sends it to Cochran with relative ease for the Fresno goalkeeper. I just wonder from that position, trying to shoot, but there's a wall there. Why not get it into the box? All the big boys were up for RGV. It seems a, a wasted opportunity there. And Sidro Martinez might have been better advised to whip the ball into the center of box and let his big boys fight it out. I wonder how many opportunities RGV will have here tonight. Fresno, the dominant home side. Headed down for Lawal, brings it onto his left foot, his shot, and it's in! An opening goal for Fresno and Kudis Lawal. It's a great strike from Kudis Lawal, absolutely brilliant. What a good header down by Jaime Chavez in the process. It's a long ball out of defense. Chavez climbs like an eagle, knocks it down to Lawal. He takes it wide and smacks it into the back of the net and sends all those fans into a delirious state. What a well-worked goal early on. Here's the long ball. Have a look at Chavez. Gets up, heads it to Lawal. He knows exactly where he's going. Lawal turn and sticks it in the far corner. And they're one up already. Their great home form continues. I thought that touch by Lawal was going to bring him a little bit too far away, but a wonderful job. Might have even gone in off the post there. The eighth goal of the season for Kudus Lawal. Fresno off and running here tonight against RGV. The smoke released from the fans as well, providing some atmosphere tonight. Quickly taken back by Kuramoto. It's Lawal again. Trying to tee it up on his right foot this time. And it's cleared away. I think Lawal just followed through there on the tackle on the defender, so free kick given. And what a good start to the game. Just what Adam Smith would have wanted from his team, especially after that loss at Las Vegas Lights that really annoyed the manager. Who, by the way, has a broken arm, so he can't do much <laughs> finger pointing at the moment. There you can just see him through the, the dugout. There we go. The broken left arm, which he got trail biking. And he said he can't point too much anymore. <laughs> Maybe the players are playing with a more relaxed sort of focus because the manager can't point at them taking to the outdoors and a good part of the country to do so. About four national parks surrounding Fresno. This is cleared away by the Foxes. They could not have asked for a better start here tonight at Chip Chansey Park. RGV, it's been a tough go of it as of late, as now they need to try to get back on track to avoid their fourth straight loss. If you look at form at home, Fresno seven wins and two draws in their last nine. They're in fantastic form, and Phoenix Rising need to be careful on the weekend. Because here at home, Fresno, wow, they are fantastic. If you look at RGV's away form, no wins in nine, seven losses and two draws, conceded 26. So it's total and absolute contrast in these two sides. One brilliant at home, one terrible away from home. And guess what? The result already shows that. <laughs> yeah, that one win coming for Rio Grande Valley on the road this year against Portland. The cross into the box. We'll take a deflection up and over. Looks like it'll be a goal kick here for RGV. If so, we think so. Alex Cooper, by the way, what a strike he had against, I think it was Las Vegas last week. Unbelievable strike to put his team one up. His first goal of the season, and I bet he would love to score a few more of those from about 25 yards out. Corner is taken short, and you can see when Fresno scores first, 11 1 and 4. Tough nut to crack for RGV now at this point. 
for the corner kick. It's sent all the way back to C.J. Cochran. You just see Justin Echeverry there with his black, his black sweater on. And he's got a tough job. Seven changes for this team, which doesn't make it easy for the team to figure things out. They've got to get to reacquaint each other and organize. And but clearly he's a manager who's trying to find an outfit that works really well. And he's making plenty of changes in the process. And you wonder what an early goal does to the game plan, whether you stick with that game plan or whether you have to shift things around a little bit. Well, I think defending is going to be the order of the day for RG no matter how they, they intend to play. They're going to be on the back foot for most of this match, I would assume. These two teams meeting all the way back in week two of the USL Championship season. A 2-0 win for Fresno. Nasilevich getting both of the goals. RGV did miss a penalty in that match as well. Game dominated by Fresno and getting that 2-0 victory early on in this season. And let's also bear in mind that RGV is a relatively young side. I wouldn't say as young as the likes of the Bethlehem and Loudons, who are playing 16 and 17 year olds, but the sort of average age must be somewhere around 22, 23. That's what makes it difficult for Jerson Echeverry. He's up against an experienced squad in Fresno. CJ Cochran, 27. Zach Ellis Hayden, 27. Mickey Daly, 32. And so, so it goes on. This is a team Fresno built to win this competition. And, and to, at least they're going to move in, you would think, into second spot here today with a win, if they should get the win. And they're certainly built for victory. We were talking with Adam Smith this week, and he was saying how after that Reno match, maybe some of the focus shifted to that Phoenix match coming up on Saturday. Maybe a bit of a letdown against Las Vegas, but solely focused on this match tonight, ahead of really a huge match in the Western Conference come Saturday night here in Fresno. Well, if there's any team that's going to stop the unbelievable run of Phoenix Rising, you would think it's going to be Fresno at home because on games played, they're the second best team in the league, bearing in mind they've played two less games than the team above them. So they should be, in theory, the second best. And they're the most likely team to beat the best in the league. So it's all set up for a cracking game on Saturday. But of course, they still have about 80 minutes to finish this one out. It's hard not to look ahead when you have that win streak coming into your home field on Saturday. Absolutely, but I'm sure Adam would have said to the players, you get the job done here today and then you can think of that. And that's the way they've started. Been right at IGV from the beginning. Look at them closing down, putting them under pressure. They've got their goal already. And I think there's every chance they can get some more. That's what Adam Smith said, wanted to take the game to RGV and get on them early. Well, mission accomplished so far. Get him up, Ramo! Get him up! Quick, quick, quick. Fresno looking to build forward again. Long ball down the left flank, and this will run all the way back to Nico Corti for a goal kick. The former Stanford Cardinal goalkeeper won the third of three straight titles as the starting keeper for the Stanford Cardinal just a few years ago. So back in the state of California. Very impressive run for the Stanford Cardinal in the college ranks just a few years ago. For GV, they must just forget about their poor away record. They must forget about the fact they are off the pace to make the playoffs. And even forget about the fact they're 1-0 down and just get on with the game. They can't afford to panic. They can't afford to do anything different. It's going to take their time, work hard, and see if they can get themselves back into this match. The teams have been known to come back from 1-0 away from home. Although, against Fresno, that's a big ask. And yeah, this Fresno team will be tuned in to getting that clean sheet and what you mentioned a few minutes ago get that first in 10 games. Cochran sends it back downfield. Headed into the box. Down for Jackson on that far side now. And Martinez will clear it away. He 
as far as Cooper. He can score from about that range, as we saw on Saturday. Looking back to that goal, we have to give a lot of credit to Jaime Chavez. He has been in brilliant form the last few weeks. As another big ball comes through. A bit too close to the keeper this time. The big number nine scoring goals, getting on the end of headers, and he set up Kudos Lawal brilliantly there for that opening goal. And that's the sort of combination that managers look for. Players that can play off each other, and certainly Chavez and Lawal working fantastically together for that opening goal. Jackson sends it high into the air, looking for Small. It's brought down to Kurimoto, able to win it back here for Fresno. See if they can get, can get out and run now. Just reflect out, and a throw-in coming for the Foxes. Through the first quarter of an hour, it's 1-0 to the home side. Kudus Lawal getting the goal. Opening knockings of this match here tonight. Jackson now on the end of one. He slips. Lawal, his shot's blocked. And he'll go out of play. Looks like he slipped right on the edge of the infield of the Fresno Grizzlies. And that all started, by the way, with a Chavez head up. Corti able to claim the cross. Carlos Small trying to cut in field. Trying to keep possession as well. He does so for a moment through the legs of Kurimoto. Just not on the same page there as Bird. And Fresno can get out and run once again. Cooper plays it wide and he gets it right back. Towards the end line, the cross. Out of play and a corner kick once again for the home side. Quick counter attack there by Fresno. And they caught a lot of orange jerseys out of place, lots of space to play into. This is a problem for RGV. You attack Fresno and lose the ball. They come straight back at you. And you've got some big players here. I just mentioned Chavez winning another header a few minutes back. They can throw Mickey Daly in there. Ramon Martin Del Campo. All great in the air. We'll see who decides to take this for Fresno. Hajek is waiting for it. An in-swinger coming. It's punched away by Corti. All the way out here for Ellis Hayden, who will send it back in. Headed back into the middle. And it's cleared away. It was Castellanos there for it. Small will try to keep possession for RGV. Unable to do so. That was Martin. It looked like got an inadvertent kick to the face when both the players were down. It will be a foul. I think it was actually on Martin who got most of that. Mm. Let's have a look at that again. Chavez is complaining to the referee. Watch Martin here. Goes down and then, oh, overcomes the boot in the face. Sure, it was an accident, but it would have been painful for Elijah Martin. <laughs> Back to his feet and having a word with referee Brandon Stevis. He's made his point to the referee, but uh, was clumsy defending at best. And Adam Smith did mention it's one less arm that he can throw in the face of the fourth official. <laughs> He's got no reason to get two up tight here today. One nil up and looking good. Right down the far side and Cooper will not win that race and out for a goal kick. Hey, hey, See how many hey. weapons Fresno have on that left hand side. Alex Cooper is quick. Elijah Martin is quick. Down the right side, Zach Ellis Hayden. Jackson and then of course big Jaime Chavez up front is a good target man. And Kudos Lawal is extremely quick. It's a lovely balanced team with threats from every single part of the pitch. Obviously, that's why they are about to move into second spot if they should win here tonight. A win or a draw would take them above Reno. They come in level on 50 points. 
Have one less win than Reno with two less games played. Making one up right here tonight. The wall. The key possession there. Big center back Connor Donovan, the captain. It's the wall back again. Plays it wide and RGV trying to get out and run and quickly won back by Fresno again. It's a bit too much for RGV at this stage of the match, isn't it? They're just chasing shadows. Every time they get the ball, Fresno close them down and dispossess them. And RGV going to have to work really, really hard here tonight if they to get something from this match. Seen a lot of number 58 for RGV. Carlos Small trying to get on the ball. He does there and plays it wide. Seems like it's just been him or surrounded by blue jerseys. And here it is once again. He does want to throw in this time. Might this be a long throw in coming for RGV? Take a look at the possession stats early on. Absolutely dominated by Fresno. Small again on the ball. The cross deflected. And this will go out. It's a corner kick for RGV, the first of the match for the Toros. Something for their supporters to cheer. Waiting to see if they're going to throw the big defenders forward and really have a go at this. It is a good opportunity. It's amazing what you can get from set pieces. And good to see Isidro Martinez is okay after his early knock. We'll take this one short. Martinez gets it back, or at least tried to, and it's a throw in once again for RGV. I think the nicest thing you can say about that was it was a waste of a corner. And why would you knock a corner short and leave yourself to be tackled? Surely you've got to knock the ball in the box. I've seen that twice now from Martinez with the early free kick, hitting it into the wall and taking that one short as well. I don't know how many opportunities RGV will get in this match to take advantage of a lot of the good ones, especially as the road team. Cochran waving his teammates forward. The man under stress and pressure. It's been a tough few months for Echeverry. He's got some decent players in his side, but just getting them to work well together and deciding what is the best combination, it's been a big challenge for him. I'll play to this near side for Ellis Hayden, who knocks it forward. Jackson will keep this in play, and it's knocked out, and it's a throw in upcoming. Shane Beckford tracking back. And another throw in for Fresno. There's those wonderful fans behind playing the drums, singing their songs, turning up every match. Wonderful support for Fresno. It looks like it did take a deflection off of Ellis Hayden. A throw in for RGV, they take quickly. Small is fouled. Thank heavens for the referees. He only has one hand to point at them. <laughs> Adam always passionate about his team, and he certainly has built them up. Last season was a bit of a struggle, but this season they've been absolutely fantastic. Maybe the biggest days are yet to come. Phoenix Rising on the weekend, playoffs coming up in a few weeks. Who knows what this Fresno team can achieve? This seems like a team that really can make some noise, especially if they are the second or third seed. They'll be on the opposite side of the bracket as Phoenix Rising and a chance to maybe meet them in the conference final should that set up. Still a lot of season left for Fresno before they can think about the playoffs. Two straight road matches in Texas coming up in a few weeks after that Phoenix match. Now here's Small. 
Trying to play wide for Beckford if he can keep it in play. He can. It's Beckford against Ellis Hayden. Beckford cuts towards the end line, gets taken down, and that's a penalty. A mistake by Ellis Hayden and RGV have a penalty kick as they look for an equalizer. A big moment and maybe a mistake by Fresno. Yeah, you would think it was. It's a good run though by Beckford, isn't it? To get into that box and cause problems. There he goes running, but all you gotta do, Ellis Hayden, is just hold him up. You can't get it, you can't get a, a hand on him. You can't get your feet entangled. There's blue shirts on the cover anyway. There's no need to make that challenge. I think it is a penalty and an unnecessary one from a Fresno point of view and potentially there goes the possible clean sheet. And we'll see what transpires here. It's Carlos Small with nine goals on the season. He steps up against CJ Cochran. He's not missed a minute this season for Fresno. He's looking to keep this match at 1-0. And it's saved by Cochran and parried away. A big moment for the Fresno goalkeeper. Good save, CJ. Well done, made up for last week with that save. Mind you, the best of penalties from Carlos Small. The keeper guesses the right way. He's likely to save that. Let's have a look at it again. Steps up, he's sort of inside of the foot. The keeper picks the right way, gets his body across. And if his manager gave him stick for the mistake at Las Vegas Lights last week, he's going to give him plenty of praise for that save. In the middle for Beckford. Comes all the way through, and Jackson has to clear it away. A very big missed opportunity for RGV. Now two penalty kicks this season against Fresno, and one was off the post, and this one saved by Cochran. And spare a thought for Jerson Echeverry, the manager of RGV. It's hard enough as it is, and yet when your team get a penalty, you can't convert it, and you can't get yourself back on level terms. That's a free kick for Fresno, and you wonder if that can maybe turn into more momentum for the home side as they charge forward for a second. Hadjik. This in towards the end line. Bodies go down in the box. It's a foul against Fresno. Del Kemper fighting at the far post there and maybe just use his arms a little bit too much or lent in to the RGV defenders. Free kick given. But relief for Fresno fans everywhere. Here, have a look at it again. He's just, he's, he's tangling a little bit there with Connor Donovan. There's still a clean sheet for CJ Cochran. There's still one up, Fresno, and Jason Echeverry is still stressed about his team and missed opportunities. Jason Echeverry doesn't want the camera on him much anymore. <laughs> Free kick won by Fresno in the midfield. I guess he's a manager. You love it when you're winning and you can play to the cameras, but when you're losing, it's not fun. At least Adam Smith will take the camera on him and his broken arm. Did we say he's going to do a Napoleon pose? <laughs> <laughs> Split wide for Cooper. Looking for Jackson in the middle. Player goes down, and it's a penalty for Fresno. And a yellow card will be issued as well. And this is to the captain, Connor Donovan. Another penalty, but this time for Fresno. Unnecessary, more problems for RGV, and there's an argument here. It, se it seems that uh, Chavez is a designated penalty taker, and maybe Ali Hadjik has decided he wants to take it, and the two of them are busy arguing about it. As we see Connor Donovan's clumsy, you can't do that Centoro's in the box. Centoro's defender, number 20, Connor Donovan. The yellow card presented by 51-50 to Connor Donovan, who's still arguing his case. We'll that is a 51-50 yellow card. 51-50 energy drink. The between official those energy two, and it looks like it will be Ali Hadjik who steps up. No question that Chavez is annoyed by it, and I can only assume he was the designated penalty taker. 
So Ali Hodgick against Corti. Ali Hodgick steps up and slots it home. It's 2-0 to the home side. Ali Hodgick doubles the lead. And Fresno off and running on this Wednesday night. RGV only got themselves to blame. They missed their penalty. They gave away an unnecessary penalty in the other side. Now they're two goals down against a team that is almost unbeatable at home. Good luck, RGV. Goalkeeper gets the right way. A clinical finish from the spot. The argument may be a moot point. I didn't see Chavez come across him. Yeah, he's not going to go and congratulate Ali Hajik. <laughs> he's annoyed with him. Might be a more conversation away from the field here tonight. But in the meantime, it's 2-0 to Fresno. The fans enjoying themselves here at Chuck Chansey Park. Through the first half hour, it is all Fresno. It could have been 1-1. If not for the saved penalty by C.J. Cochran. C.J. putting things right after last week's mistake at Las Vegas, because you're right, Fred making that save Ball has changed this match. RGV giving away Amir. a silly and unnecessary Fred penalty, and they've been punished. Number 13, Amir. All into the box, Amir. and it's cleared away. You see how good Fresno is all time when scoring two goals. They've never lost. Well, given away in the midfield. RGV coming forward again. Trying to find something here in this final 15 minutes before halftime. Three straight losses for RGV. It's not looking any better, is it? Looks like they're well on their way to a fourth straight loss. In those three losses, only scored one goal. Had a chance to double it with a penalty, and that was saved. There's Bird. The shot saved. There was a whistle away from the ball. Looks like this will go back to Fresno. Select is the official ball supplier of the USL Championship in many of the finest leagues in the world. Since 1947, Select has been the leader in soccer ball quality and innovation. For the latest Select products and special offers, please visit SelectSportAmerica.com. There's an Echeverry voicing his opinion to the fourth official. It's not a happy opinion, I can tell you that much. The coach has got a lot of reasons to be frustrated with his side. Coach's job is to find a solution. Sometimes you look at it and you just don't know where that solution is going to come from, but that's what you get paid for. Going back by Small off the header. And a goal scorer from Sunday at Sacramento on the bench, Nico Lemoyne. And his second goal of the season. We'll see if there are any halftime alterations to this team that saw seven changes coming into tonight from Sunday's loss at Sacramento just up the road. Player down for RGV and the foul is called. Tonight, Riley's group a stamp on the ankle. Oh, it's always painful. But again, RGV going to use this set piece to their advantage. Let's see what they do with it. It's going to play short. Again, you just wonder, 2 0 down. Why not lock it into the box and fight for it and try and cause some problems? Play to this near side, headed back into the box. Looking for Beckford. Bird takes a shot on and. It's Cochran with a pretty straightforward dive to his right. Well, it's a shot from RGV. It's positive. Nice little bit of play. Gets recycled here. Decent pass from Junkwa. And Bird at least makes CJ Cochran work. 
like when Beckford has been on the ball, RGV have had opportunities coming forward. This time it's Jackson for Fresno, played forward. There were two players there. And Chavez in the wall. It goes back to Corti in goal. Yeah, slightly more accurate ball there, and they were in Fresno. Here they come again, good pressure, turnover ball. On the turn, the shot, it bounces wide. And out for another goal kick here for RGV. It's a problem for RGV so often that they've not been able to play their way out of their half because of this high pressure from Fresno, closing them down, making life difficult, and punishing every single mistake of RGVs. With just weeks remaining, the pressure is officially on. Tune in to ESPN3 on October 2nd at 6 p.m. Pacific as El Paso Locomotive look to secure one of the final playoff spots when Fresno FC has its sights set on hosting some playoff games. It's Locomotive FC and the Foxes October 2nd at 6 p.m. Pacific for Wednesday Night Soccer on ESPN3. Another Wednesday night soccer in the books a little while ago with St. Louis FC taking down New York Red Bulls 2 at home for St. Louis. And we close out this Wednesday night here in Fresno. The shot taken is blocked. It's cleared away for a throw in for RGV. That's to Shane Beckford again with the shots and the effort and the creativity around the box. He certainly is their one bright light in this first half. The ball into the middle. Looked like it glanced off the hand there of Beckford. Just when you give him some praise, he mishits hits the ball completely. <laughs> <laughs> it's the announcer's jinx right there. <laughs> but he won that penalty so superbly well by driving in the box and tempting Zach Ellis Hayden to make some contact with him. This has been about the only RGV player who's shown that sort of commitment to get into the opponent's face and cause them problems. So back downfield by Cochran. Looks like RGV have had a bit more time on the ball in the past few minutes. So they look to build forward again. Played by Ellis Hayden, who goes to ground. And it's Carlos Small to come away with it. And a Manian charging forward and taken away by Lawal, who is tracking back. Fresno look to come forward again. It's Cooper on the ball. Give away to Cabrera. We'll give Cooper some praise. He's up for goal of the week. Go <laughs> vote on uslchampionship.com. That was some goal as well. What a beautiful strike against Las Vegas. Absolutely stunning. Just a pity they couldn't follow it up with a victory. That goal deserved a win, but then, of course, an error by CJ. Then a given away a penalty, and in the end, a 3-1 loss. But if it sparks them back to life, which it has done, and if they go on to do something against Phoenix, then people will very soon forget about the Las Vegas result. And so far, two goals to the good for Fresno. The cross, easy catch for CJ Cochran. And the cross from Samuel Junker. He's got to be more accurate there. Got to find an orange shirt. Everybody needs to raise their game on this RGV side. Jackson into the box, and it was Chavez who took the shot. It did take a glance off his hand, and the whistle does blow. Quickly won back by Fresno. And a play forward, one touch football there by Fresno, but a giveaway back for RGV. Seems like this Fresno side has turned the page from that loss on Saturday night. They've really come out right from the get-go. They've been dominant so far in this first half. 
Yeah, they certainly have. And they've been so good all season. They had this one or, one or two little off games, losing two of the last three. Real surprise, and it happens to every team. Well, every team bar Phoenix Rising. <laughs> Mind you, they had their blip at the start of the season. And sometimes you need to be shaken up a little bit, and it's coming at a good time. It's coming at a time just before they play Phoenix and a time when they're getting ready for the playoffs. It's Cooper charging forward again. Playing it wide. Back into the box. The cross is blocked. RGV come away with it. Eckford gets taken down and put it back in play right away. Another foul there by Ali Hadjik. Fans, you can continue to enjoy the USL on ESPN through the 2022 season. The USL is excited to announce that the championship in League One will remain with the leader in sports for three more years. ESPN Plus will continue to be the home of all things USL, and at least 19 games a year will be featured on the ESPN family of networks, including nine games on ESPN Deportes. Continue to follow, support, and watch your club on ESPN and ESPN Plus. Just saw Echeverry there trying to get his team of orange shirts up and tight on Zach Ellis Hayden trying to box them in and which they have done orange shirts everywhere now can they get possession the answer is no they can't it's Martin Lee leading this charge forward and for Chavez he holds it up back for Martin top of the box his shots blocked almost fell there for Jackson and Ellis Hayden coming out of nowhere takes it back his cross almost headed into the net and said it's out. It's a corner kick for the Foxes again. Yeah, more pressure from Fresno. A ball like that comes across and Castellanos nearly scores an own goal. But it comes from the pressure of the ball flying in. Look at it. He hits it with pace. The defender just gets on the end of it. Castellanos and sees it over the crossbar. RGV really scrambling to defend at the moment. They're under huge pressure. Hajik comes over to potentially take this corner kick. Jackson there, he'll play it short. Back for Ali Hajik. It's the top of the box for Cooper. He'll take it on, a very similar position as where he scored the other day. It's taken away by Small now. It was Martin charging back. Nearly an opportunity out on the break there for Carlos Small. I was just wondering if he couldn't have just hit that and run because he was through. It was one on one, hits it into the space, and then it's a, then it's a foot race, which Carlos Small might very well have won. He's so quick. In the end, the opportunity was lost. His coach saying to him, come on, you can do better than that. stages of this first 45 minutes. 2-0 to the home side here tonight. Judas the wall getting on the score sheet very early in this one. And then the penalty by Ali Hajik. That's where we stand here at 2-0. Little of Argy Bargy between Kudus the wall and Connor Donovan. Wall not happy. I wonder if he's going to have a little word with him to calm him down. He's got to remember he's 2 0 up. You don't need to get into a fight. If you're 2 0 up, you can just mess with the opposition. Don't get tempted into an argument because then all of a sudden you get sent off and then this match can switch completely. So I'm sure Adam Smith will have a little word at half time to everyone. Don't get involved in any fights or pushing or shoving. You're your job is now to close this game out and win it comfortably. Jackson wins it back. A lot of room for him to run down this near side. Played in the middle for Chavez. Martin was making the run. Chavez will take this on his right foot, and he finds the right corner. It's 3-0 to Fresno. Up and running go the Foxes tonight. Brilliant finish from Chavez, but what a great move by Fresno from one end of the pitch to the other. You can involve Jackson in that, you can involve Elijah Martin with a run that dragged 
players away from Chavez, and in the end, Chavez tucks it in the back of the end. There's Jackson's pass, and there's Elijah Martin coming into your screen there, and it pulls the defenders, and with that, it gives Chavez time to turn and bend that into the corner of the net, which he does with absolute style, and Fresno are running riot here tonight. Actually, the goalkeeper, Nico Corti, had a good view of that. Jaime Chavez, his 10th goal on the season, leading this team. Scored six goals in six games in August. Month of September, getting a goal here tonight. Chavez was still upset he didn't get to take the penalty, and Ali Hajik <laughs> did. So he said, OK, well, I'll score one on my own then. Good timing as well, just before half time. Happy days for Fresno. They can go to that locker room well on top. Looking forward to a fun second half of attacking football. For RGV, it's exactly the opposite. It's going to be an upset manager, Echeverry. Assisted by number seven. Small in the box, the cross. There was nobody there. There will be three minutes of stoppage time at the end of this first 45. Minute for each Fresno goal. <laughs> well, it's going to be a tough locker room chat for RGV. Looking at the Sterion down the barrel of their fourth straight loss. They've missed a penalty. They've given away a silly penalty. It's been a bad first half. I wonder how many changes Echeverry could make at halftime. That's tactically or Personnel-wise, a shot from deep, and this one sail into the dugout behind the goal. He's already made seven changes at Chivari, so it's very difficult for him to make too many changes yet again. Oh, one or two players in particular that you might think, well, they could make a really, really big difference. One of those would be Salazar. Up front, looks so sharp in the last match. The loss at Sacramento was his turn and run that helped create the very first goal. Then he had a one-on-one -on -one chance shortly after that, which maybe he could have done better at, but he's someone they can use up front. Jesus Enriquez there as well in the midfield. Brad Dunwell potentially somebody who they could use as well, who is a star at Wake Forest. Tough California road trip for RGV. As they close it out here tonight before they head back to Texas for two straight home matches. The whistle does blow, a free kick for Fresno here in the final minute of this first half. One more goal there for Fresno. It's Cooper charging forward. Plays it wide for Martin. Well, I would think Fresno fancy their chances of scoring a few more. Three in the first half alone. In the second half, they're going to come out firing again at RGV. They see a wounded animal, which means I think they can stick a few more in the back of the net. Of course, the danger is that RGV come flying back at them second half. We'll have to wait and see. Right now, it's been a fantastic first half for Fresno. And goal difference, something to keep in mind. With a win tonight, Fresno would go level on wins with Reno, though they'd have three more points than them. The goal differential is the second tiebreaker. Wins are the first. Ball into the box, looking for Chavez. Comes out here to the top, Ellis Hayden. Now it's Jackson, waiting for that whistle now. And there it comes. The final whistle of this first 45 minutes from Chuck Chansey Park. It's 3-0 to the Foxes and a dominant first 45 for the home side. No question about it. It's all been Fresno. You see those orange shirts. The heads are hanging low. They don't know what to do in the second half. How are they going to turn this around? How are they going to stop Chavez from winning the high ball and scoring goals? Zach Ellis Hayden from bombing down the right-hand side. Good luck figuring that one out. <laughs> and you can see when leading at the half, they are unbeaten in eight matches when Fresno is ahead. So we'll head to halftime. Three goals in the first half for Fresno. And 
They lead 3-0 here at halftime. Stay with us here from Chuck Chansey Park. I'm going to go for a few things. Could have had four goals, two each between them. You've got to be a bit more patient in front of goals. You've got to get your time in your run right. And you've got to connect with the football. Right? And the one that's come across the face of the goal is another one. The one where you beat the lad once, you beat the lad twice, you go beat him again. Your left foot's fantastic. Smash it with your left foot. I want to win the game. So if I haven't got a goal in the next 15 minutes, I have to make changes. And I'm sorry, that's not a threat or punishment, but I want to win this game. Let's be solid, let's be strong, let's be focused. Be patient, it will come. Jaime, you'll be able to keep your run going. Q, you'll be able to get back on form. JJ, you might even pop up and smash one in the top corner. Right, come on. Get back in. And pretty cool to look behind the scenes there with Adam Smith and what a difference a year makes from last year, the inaugural season for Fresno FC, into this season. Quite a turnaround for the Foxes. Yeah, it takes time, and Adam said it many, many times. He had to bring in certain players. Some didn't fit initially and had to move them on. But he's got it right. That's the bottom line. I mean, they're playing fantastic football. They're almost certainly going to move into second position with a win tonight. You can't somehow you doubt very much. RGV can get back from a 3-0 deficit. And they're heading into this Phoenix match where you begin to wonder, well, maybe they are good enough to knock Phoenix off their perch. And that's job done as far as I think most Fresno fans are concerned. Adam Smith's done what they required of him. That'll be a very interesting match come Saturday mm. night. But when you look ahead at the schedules for them and, F and Reno, it's pretty interesting when you take a look at both of these, a common match with El Paso in there right in the middle. Yeah, nothing's easier this time of year because some of these teams are playing to try and get in the playoffs and you know, LA Galaxy 2, for example, are on the edge of it. El Paso, they're going to be fighting for it. So nothing's easy. Even Las Vegas lights there might have a slim chance and might really come for Reno. So, yep, all tough towards the end of the season. But Fresno have the edge on Reno at this moment in time. And Fresno have that one extra match to play. They finish the season at Orange County. So it's halftime here from Chuck Chansey Park. It's 3-0 to the home side. Let's go check out what's been going on around the USL. He's a better in for the goal. That's what going to left point. Jamal Johnson.
with one touch no to settle. Way. No and it looks fine way. at the top of the net. No Flag stays down. Way. And Indy 11 has a one. Ball struck towards the 18. Headed on and headed home. With the side oh, glancing header and he caps it off with a goal of the night. I think they want dangerous play call. That one served oh, in in the back wow. of the net. Fresno out of nowhere. Nolson serves it into the back post. It's off the woodwork and it's in. That's in the back of the net. Another cross into the corner and Hubbard does even better. Moberg's gonna take a shot on goal with a cross and a fantastic save. Good shot for Blackwood. Nice play by Van Ockel to force him to give the ball up. Illich save. Shobani! He did it again! Whips it in, finds the back post! Oh, what a finish! Arturo Rodriguez! Through ball though. Demos the other way. Demos saved by Hara. That's in the middle. Still Jaden Nelson is shot. It's saved again by Giuliano Chaje. Wide open! Fitzgerald covering the mark, still Rodriguez and stopped by Fitzgerald. Three nil at halftime here from Chuck Chansey Park. And we get into some news and notes from around the USL championship. And of course, Phoenix Rising, well they just keep on rising. 20 straight wins, and of course, then you go to the East, and at the top, it's New York Red Bulls 2 and Indy 11. Uh, good teams all around. I mean, there's a big battle here between Fresno and Phoenix Rising coming up, but you look at the East, and they've got some good teams. Tampa has slipped off a little bit, but Indy 11 in great form. Red Bulls 2 as well. Wow, East against West, there's going to be some classic clash in a few weeks' time. It should, and then USL... Coming to San Diego, they'll start in the 2020 season there with Landon Donovan. Take a look at the standings and Fresno, the live standings. They go right ahead of Reno and still a game in hand against Reno and Phoenix. Yep, live standings, should uh, it should stay that way. When you're 3-0 up at home, you're Fresno against RGV, you would think that Fresno will still be in second spot in 45 minutes' time. It's done in sort of 8th, 9th, and 10th, where all the real excitement is Austin Bowl, New Mexico, LA Galaxy 2, San Antonio. Only three points separates all of those teams. It's going to be a real bun fight to make the playoffs. And the Western Conference schedule coming up this weekend. Reno, a tough test in New Mexico on Friday. I think we're all looking at that Saturday night match right here at Chuck Chansey Park with Phoenix coming to town. Yeah, brilliant. It's, it's, the, it's the perfect match coming at the perfect time. Fresno have got their form back. Uh, Phoenix unbeaten in 20. Well, one they've won 20, not even unbeaten. Uh, but if any team can stop them, any team can do it, it's this team we're watching today, Fresno. Especially at home. A few other interesting matchups there with Sacramento and OKC Energy as well. So it is halftime here at Chuck Chansey Park in Fresno. It's 3-0 to the home side. Come back with highlights and the second half right after this.
Back here, it's halftime between Fresno and RGV. It's 3-0 to the home side. A dominating first 45 minutes for the Foxes. Let's take a look at the first half highlights here from Chuck Tansey Park. And it was Fresno pretty much right from the opening whistle, just dominating. And early on, the first goal for the Foxes. Yeah, Curtis Awal with a great turn here, all set up by Chavez's header. There he is, he puts the header down. Noel makes himself a little bit of space. Quick turn and gets it in that near post to beat Nicholas Corti. That was the first goal coming in the sixth minute. Then on the other end, it was a chance to equalize for the road team. A penalty called but on Ellis Hayden. It would be Carlos Small that would go to the spot. And a great save by Cochran. Yeah, good save by Cochran. Picks the right way, gets behind it, makes the save. And that's a crucial moment for RGB. They really had to take that chance because then there were more chances coming. Balls coming in from wide. There was a, we well, actually didn't quite see the pull down there for the penalty. A penalty given to the home side and tucked away by Eli Hatchik. And by then it was 2-0 down and really RGV were on the ropes and really battling to get back in this match. There's a little shot gonna come in here from Bird. Comfortable save from CJ. You see it from the edge of the box, but Missing that penalty was crucial for RGV. And Fresno, well, they would want some more, and Chavez really creating this on his own and finding that right corner. That's a brilliant strike, but too much space on the edge of the box given by the RGV defenders, and a couple of players pulling defenders wide to give space for Chavez, and look at the shots on target. It says only three for Fresno, but it doesn't really tell the story. They were way more dominant. Lots more possession and opportunity. And in the end, it's, it's going to be a tough second half for RGV. They're going to have to improve a hell of a lot, or it could be a really bad afternoon for the visitors. And earlier in that first half, the possession stats were nearly 70% in favor of Fresno. And that really shows you how dominant they have been. Sometimes possession stats don't always do that, but tonight it is definitely the case for the home side. Back here for this second 45 minutes. Josh Eastern, Gary Bailey, our entire crew with you. We'll just see whether RGV can pull a few back and make it interesting or if Fresno will just keep on scoring. Halftime substitution for the Toro. There is a substitution Engine for RGV. And coming on will be Michael Salazar. We thought that Entering might be a substitution, and it will come. Michael David Salazar. Cabrera will come off Time for, the for RGV. Half. So nine goals of Michael Salazar Fresno. enter the fray here in this second half. Let's go. Underway here in this second 45 minutes. Team switch ends. It's now Fresno going right to left. And RGV going left to right. And we'll see what that partnership is like up top now between Salazar and Small. And it is not a small deficit that RGV has here tonight. It's a positive move. Well done, Echeverry. You've got to go for it. You're 3-0 down. It doesn't make a difference whether you lose 3-0 or 5-0. But if you have a chance of getting your team back on level terms, and Salazar is that player who can do that for you, score the goals. Even one goal at 3-1, suddenly there's a bit of a energy lift in the RGV team. And that's what you're playing for now if you're in the orange shirt, just to get back in this game, score a goal, and try and make a bit of a fight of this game. It was RGV who actually scored the first goal in their match Sunday against Sacramento in the fifth minute through Nico Lemoyne for Two more goals coming from Sacramento. Eventually take that match 2-1 for Sac Republic. Salazar who made all that possible. Oh, he's through, nearly. the wall, and he has to jump over the keeper in the end. So comes back to Corti. Salazar who made so much possible in that match against Sacramento. He was the danger, he was the threat. He helped set up that first goal. And he had one or two other chances as well. So, can he do something similar here now and cause the Fresno defense a few problems? Just the one goal for RGV, and suddenly we will have game on. One of the big keys for Adam Smith and Fresno was 
coming out, getting on RGV early. And say they did that with a sixth minute goal through Kudus Lawal. Foul there on Jackson. The game plan has gone to script and now it's just about closing this out. One of the big goals for Adam Smith through the rest of this season is to go undefeated at home. Just that one slip up against Sacramento Republic back in May. That was a game which Adam Smith said they dominated, just didn't come out with the win against their rival. We'll see what they can do here the rest of tonight and as the season goes on here at Chuck Chansey Park. We'll see what RGV have here in the second half. They're small on the ball. For some space to play forward. He gets it back. He's looking for Salazar there. Tug of the jersey there by Donovan. It's important for Fresno that they don't let RGV back into this match. From a Fresno perspective, and we have man down here. So kudos to Wall. You need to be very, very strong against RGV, punish them for any mistakes, put them under pressure. Don't give them any chance now. That's Kudos now walking across. Fresno FC in the Central Valley Blood Center are hosting the moment. Either way, we hope it's not a serious injury. Shove is going across as well to make sure. Let's have a look and see what it was. Jackson gets it in the face. That's probably what knocked him down. Never pleasant. There we go. Oh, there we go. On the side of the face. Feels like a punch, no doubt. Take him a moment. At least he's not going to end up like his coach at the moment. Well, they say they want to change over. So obviously the ball hit him really hard. And some people don't understand how how that can catch you on the side of the of the chin. It's, it is almost like someone throwing a punch at you. And seems like maybe he twisted his neck in the process, Jackson. So sad to see him exit the field. And we'll see who the replacement is here for Adam Smith. A forced substitution here is still kind of holding his neck is Jackson. First season with Fresno, the Brazilian, over 100 appearances in MLS. A lot of experience in those legs. A bit shaken up after the ball to the face. Look at our first substitution of the night for Fresno. It's a wise decision if you're in doubt. You're 3-0 up at home. Not like your team needs you to help you get through this they should be able to see it to a conclusion without you and if you're in any doubt you don't feel you feel a bit groggy you look as if he's walking too well then don't take any risk get yourself off the park and just rest especially with head injuries important to take care of yourself And taking the slow walk off. Looks like his night is finished. It's been a decent night up until the moment he got hit in the face by the ball. Played well. Been part of a very, very good Fresno performance. So probably will feel comfortable that he might get chosen to start the next match. And Diego Casillas comes in to replace him. Goal and two assists for Casillas this season. A lot of time in Fresno, two years with Fresno Fuego. And last season with Fresno FC under 23s. Now here with the top club in the city of Fresno. And on to the pitch here in the 52nd minute, a first substitution used by Adam Smith. Sub used for both sides in these opening minutes of the second half. Salazar coming on for RGV just a few moments ago. 
Free kick now for Ali Hodzik. See what the decision is here by Fresno's number 13. Towards the back post area. It's kept in here. Ball clipped into the middle. And the header will eventually come to Nico Corti, and it looks like he does keep it in play. And there's Del Campo getting up for it. I think he just kept it in play, the goalkeeper. Seemed to squirm away from him at the end. But uh, it seems strange that Jaime Chavez was the one knocking the ball into the box. You really want him in that's trying to head the ball home. But right now I'm just looking at it thinking there's two, two different perspectives here. RGV is about fighting and scrapping for everything to get yourself back in the match. And for Fresno it's about controlling the game, keeping the tempo and trying to finish off RGV. Here's Bird trying to start something for the road team. Eventually will be cleared away. Comes to Chavez, play it wide for the new substitute, Casillas. Coming down that right side, cross looking for Lawal in the middle. He's still fighting for it. It's cleared away. As Casillas goes down, but play will continue with Beckford. Still Beckford on the ball. And a giveaway looking for Salazar. Matches opened up. Look at all this green space in the middle. The orange shirts push forward so much, they left big, big gaps for Fresno to play in. And that's the danger, that's the risk that RGV have to take. They can also get punished on the counter attack if they're not careful. As Corti looks to clear this away and out of play. A missed clearance there by the RGV goalkeeper. And I trust that Chavez and Eli Hatchik sorted out their penalty problem in the locker room. They certainly weren't on speaking terms when Ali Hatchik took the ball away from Chavez to take the penalty. <laughs> but I'm sure the manager managed to sort things out and they're all back on good terms again. You can see when Chavez scored his goal, it looked like he had no intentions of passing that one up. <laughs> he was taking that one all the way. And he made it worth his while in the end. You wonder if there's another penalty tonight for Fresno, who will step up to take that one. I trust they sorted that out in the locker room at halftime. The manager was very clear who gets the next one, just in case it does happen. That's really been a controversy across world football in general of a manager really stamping his foot down and steers the wall into the box. Towards the top of the box now, looking for Casillas. Cycled all the way to that far side. Ellis Hayden keeps it alive. His shot, it's right at Corti. Makes a save at that near post. Ellis Hayden doing so well to make that little bit of space, but by then the angle was tight. Casillas with a better angle to begin with. Poor Nicholas Corti comes in and tries to make the number one spot his own and has three goals smashed past him. Not much he could do about them either. They have .39 goals against average last season and it's a bit of a tougher season for him here in 2019, although he does have 36 saves. Flag up, we'll give it back to RGV. Hayden keeps it in play on the far side and then advances it for Lawal. Two players in the middle looking for Martin. That one's knocked away. And we'll go out for a throw in now for Fresno. Zach Jackson who is there to clear it. For Fresno, there's no need for urgency. They're 3-0 up. The urgency's got to come from RGV. And we saw it there. Nice closing down by the orange shirts. 
got to get themselves back in the match if they want to take anything away from this game. Just one goal will spark life into the visitors and start to cause a little bit of panic at Fresno. Here comes RGV forward again. It's Kevin Rodriguez. Actually come wide here to Small. Just cross towards the back post. Eckford will keep it in play. Looking for Bird now. Martinez, his shot is always rising and it goes out of play. A goal kick here for CJ Cochran. That looked like a sub was readying and yes, it will be Jesus Enriquez to come on. Three goals and two assists for the Newark, California native. For the homecoming here to the state of California. And it will be Shane Beckford who makes way. A positive night for Beckford. It was a good night for Beckford, especially early on. He looked really sharp and just wonder whether his legs have run out of energy now. Was the one to win that penalty in the first half for RGV. And they were unable to convert from the spot. Remonto plays it wide for Casillas. Casillas, a long looping cross towards the back post. Martin will track it down and keep it in play. And his cross towards the back post again, and this will go out of play for a goal kick. Just weeks remaining, the pressure is officially on. Tune in to ESPN3 on October 2nd at 6 p.m. Pacific as El Paso Locomotive look to secure one of the final playoff spots while Fresno FC has its sights set on hosting some playoff games. It's Locomotive FC and the Foxes October 2nd at 6 p.m. Pacific for Wednesday Night Soccer on ESPN3. will be part of that two-game Texas swing for Fresno. Also take them to San Antonio. It's all been a bit quiet, hasn't it, this match? To all the excitement in the first half and goals and penalties saved. But job done for Fresno and RGV not quite capable of causing Fresno too many problems. And almost like you're going to strangle the life out of RGV if you're Fresno. Give them nothing, close it down, make it impossible for them to play or nearly impossible and just get the match to a comfortable conclusion, hopefully with a clean sheet if you're CJ Cochran. Flag up on the near side. It just seems like nothing has gone right for RGV here in Fresno. I'm sure they'll be happy to get home tomorrow. Half hour left to go tonight from Chuck Chansey Park. Fresno looking to take hold of that second spot in the Western Conference standings with three points. A draw would do it as well. They look well on their way to three points here tonight. Rio Grande Valley staring at their 10th loss on the road unless they can turn things around here tonight. Forward looking for Chavez. It's cut out by Castellanos. Now Ali Hajik plays it wide. Chavez again, and he finds a brace. It's 4 0 to the Foxes. And Fresno off and running, and they're not looking back. Great finish yet again from Chavez. Good pressure from Fresno. They've been probing, they've been pushing, they've been threatening to jump on any RGV mistakes, any gaps, and that big man there has done exactly that. His second goal of the night, another good finish into the far corner. He is on absolute fire now as he reaches double figures, 10 goals for the season. Look at this, it's pressure, winning the ball in midfield there by Ali Hajek, gets the ball straight away to Chavez and he tucks it in the back of the net. That just comes from good discipline, good pressure, good turnover ball, and a good finish. Chavez back to his scoring ways. Now 11 goals on the season and a brace for the big number nine who set up that first goal as well. Two goals and an assist. Might he be 
our man of the match at the end of this. Now he's on a hat trick, almost to give away at the back. Here's the wall. And Donovan able to knock it out of play, and then the wall was unhappy with himself. And it's a big swipe at it. It is going from bad to worse, though, for RGV. Four goals conceded. The heads are down. The manager doesn't know what else he can do. He's brought Salazar on that hasn't really turned things around as yet. And they could be in danger of conceding five or six here if they're not careful. It's now eight goals in the last eight games for Jaime Chavez. He didn't score against Las Vegas, but did score against Reno back on the 7th of September. And now here's a corner kick for the Foxes again. Into the middle, comes all the way through, falls for Lawal, and he has a brace. Chavez got his brace a moment ago. Lawal says, I want one too. And Fresno, five goals to the good. They're falling apart, RGV. That ball came in from the corner. They didn't clear it. it was bouncing around. It came out to Kudos Lawal, and he smashed it into the back of the net. Poor Jason Echeverry doesn't know what to do with himself team have come out second half and there's been no improvement whatsoever have a look at this corner comes in not dealt with it's bouncing around and Kudos Wall just jumps on that and smacks it into the back of the net chaos for RGV now the most goals of the season for Fresno they scored four at Real Monarchs on May 4th and a 4-2 win Kudos the wall his ninth of the season, and it's now 5-0 to Fresno FC. And it looks like we'll get a substitution as well. And that is Jamal Johnson waiting, and a night to forget for Nico Corti in goal. There's not much the goalkeeper could have done about it. It's not his fault, any of them. It's hard to see if he could have saved them. But at the end of the day, it doesn't look good for goalkeepers or defenders when you have five put past you. Kunian coming on, Jamal Johnson, Zachary Ellis Hayden is off. Jamal Johnson has seven goals himself this season. Played wide for Chavez, who's now on a hat trick. Casillas into the box towards the back post. And Johnson nearly, his first touch was almost a goal. Oh, they're running right now, aren't they, Fresno? At the same time, RGV are just, some of the players just given up. I know it's tough when you're 5-0 down, but you've really got to battle so hard not to be embarrassed any further. I'm not so sure that's going to be the case here. It looks like Fresno could score goals almost at will. There's been a bunch of occasions where Fresno has scored four goals, including last season, but they've never scored five in franchise history. It's another record-breaking night here for Fresno. Another ball sent in towards the near post. It's cleared away. So five goals, a franchise record in a single match. Here in season number two, Cooper is cross right at Nico Corti. Well, happy days for Fresno. No question about that. What a good display. What a good bounce back from that defeat at Las Vegas. And that's what Adam Smith wanted, to see some character. And here they come. They're still full of running. Cooper into the middle. It's dealt with by Castellanos. If you're waiting on the bench for Fresno, you're like, I want to get in, in this match. Maybe <laughs> I can find a goal for myself. Kudos the wall. Looking for Johnson. And it's cleared all the way back downfield. Franchise record, five goals for Fresno FC. They're on September the 18th, and here is a substitution. It will be Kyle Adams of Auckland, New Zealand, coming on for the Panamanian Carlos Small. Second season with RGV for Kyle Adams. Number 58. Carlos Small. Started all but one of his 25 appearances last season for the club. And gets about 25 minutes here tonight. A 
Played wide for Enriquez. As RGV look to get into the attack. Enriquez goes down. And it looks like it will be a free kick. Or maybe a throw in. Oh, it looks like a free kick for RGV. We'll see what they decide to do with this one. So far, they haven't really bombed any into the box, but now would be a good time to get your big guys in there and have a decent free kick. Their corners have been poor, their free kicks have been poor, they haven't taken the opportunities, they haven't put Fresno under hardly any pressure. There's Martinez, takes this one into the box, headed up in the air by Chavez. Cochran almost spills it. Well, he did spill it, but luckily he didn't pay for it. Played wide for Martinez again. He'll curl this into the box. Looking for Salazar. It looks like that did take a touch. It will be a corner kick for RGV. Look at the difference there when you're more positive. From the free kick, RGV get it in the box and there's problems and the goalkeeper can't quite get it. And then it goes out and you put it back in the box and nearly get on the end of it and you get a corner. That's the pressure that RGV haven't been putting on Fresno at all in this game. Maybe they will do for this final 20 or so minutes. There's Martinez into the middle, headed towards the back post. It's blocked and then it's saved by Cochran and cleared away by Martin. RGV on the doorstep. And then the foul by Lawal back downfield. Very close though for the Toros. This will be yellow card as well for Kudus Lawal once he turns around. It's a good save from C.J. Cochran there. I think it was from Kyle Adams. He makes the save. He's desperate to keep that clean sheet. Yellow card show to Fresno Let's have a look at it again. This is the... Oh, I think the standing on the ankle comes afterwards. When Kudus is actually, to be fair to him, he's trying to get out the way, but referee doesn't see it like that. And here's the save. Ball comes in. They win the header. RGV, and there's the save from Carl Adams. Absolutely fantastic from CJ. He really is pumped up to keep his clean sheet. Made a penalty save already in this match. Looks like it's Zach Jackson, the Cypress, Texas native. He's down on the field, being tended to. So he looks to get back to his feet. Fans, you can continue to enjoy the USL and ESPN through the 2022 season. The USL is excited to announce that the championship in League One will remain with the leader in sports for three more years. ESPN Plus will continue to be the home of all things USL. And at least 19 games a year will be featured on the ESPN family of networks, including nine games on ESPN Deportes. Continue to follow, support, and watch your club on ESPN and ESPN Plus. Still limping a little bit there is Zach Johnson. Jackson, rather, sorry, Zach Jackson. Took a bit of a knock, but hopefully he can run it off. And you just wonder if that penalty finds its way into the back of the net for yeah. RGV. It's level at one. Maybe some pressure. Maybe some Las Vegas thoughts creep into Fresno's minds, but it's saved by Cochran, and just the rest is history, as they say. Yep. Could have been, it is, it was the turning point in so many ways. And it could have been something for IGV. Carlos Small with the penalty. Was it a bad penalty? Well, I've seen better. Was it a good save? Absolutely. It was going to be a momentum changer regardless. It was just whether that would swing in favor of Fresno or RGV. You have to give credit to this home side. They've come out and maybe a little inspired by their coach, Adam Smith. And you see five goals, a franchise record on the scoreboard tonight. I thought I saw Christian Cheney warming up there as well. I bet he wants to get in here and see if he can add a few goals of his own. It's three goals on the season. Here's Martin. Good job by Enriquez to win it back for RGV. They look to play through the middle. It's played wide for Enriquez, rewarded for his defending. Back again now for Rodriguez. The cross cleared away by Daly as far as Martin into that corner. 
And a throw in coming for the Toros. Looks like Martin hurt himself there trying to kick that ball down the line. Did he go into the, the uh, big board on the side? Is that what hurt him? Seems to be in pain. Holding that right ankle. Let's have a look and see what happened. I don't know if he connected with the uh, attacker's foot. Let's have a look. He goes to kick it up there. And he rolls into the boarding. Hard to see what happened. I don't know if he made contact with Kevin Rodriguez there or not. By the way, good to see him back up on his feet. And there is Christian Cheney. So let's see who he comes on for. I wonder if there's maybe a last minute sub if Martin can't continue, but it looks like Cheney and his jersey on ready to go. He's still hobbling a little bit, Elijah Martin, but he's tough. I don't think he wants to get off this pitch when things are going so well for Fresno. The Fresno native, native himself. Gotta be a thrill to play for your hometown club. Cheney is waiting at midfield. He will come on to the next possible moment as Kurimoto is tripped. Here is the substitution, the final substitution of the night. It will be Christian Cheney, another Fresno native, to come on. And Kudus Lawal, a brace for him tonight. He scored the first goal and the last goal as we stand now. And he makes his way off a successful night for Fresno's number 20. He's had a very good game. He's such a good striker up front. And he's on a yellow card as well, so good decision by Adam Smith to get him off just in case he misjudged a tackle or something. And maybe that's what he's saying to him there. Didn't want you to get into any more trouble, so let's get you off the pitch and get you rested and give Cheney a chance to show us what he can do. But Cheney also has to be careful. One more yellow card and he would be suspended for a match. Three goals this season for Cheney in his second season with Fresno after two with Sacramento. All three subs for both sides have been exhausted to get into the final 15 minutes. The scoreboard really says it all. 5-0 to Fresno and it's been about as dominating as you might think. It's also been very disappointing by RGV. Yes, the penalty that was saved, I get it. But then giving away a silly penalty minute, minutes later, now you're 2-0 down. They had, they had some chances, but they really haven't put Fresno under much pressure. Now you're seeing more of the running, seeing what you should have been, seeing a lot more of this in the first half, an energetic RGV. There's no point being energetic when you're 5-0 down. You want that when you're 0-0. Nil -nil. forward for Chavez, one more goal and he'd have a hat trick. Here's Johnson now. He'll have a rip. And it's saved by Corti. Any, anything, you just, it's the other way. Good hands behind the ball by the goalkeeper. He's probably pleased to make a decent save. At least he can go home when everybody says to him, you got beat five goals put past you. Because, well, I made a couple of good saves as well. Fresno still working hard in the middle. Ali Hajik. He'll take a rip from deep. And this one skied well out of play. And Jamal Johnson is saying to him, just pass it to me. I was free, and there were a couple of blue shirts free there. I think it might have been a little bit selfish of Ali Hadjik to go for this glory goal from 25 yards when you have players around you in much better positions. And Johnson's saying, you already had a goal. Let me have one as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. Now there's two balls on the field. Fans of the USL and Villa's elite youth platform, USL Academy. This allows clubs at all levels across the USL to develop its local youth and compete at the highest level across the United States, including the USL Academy Cup. For more information, visit uslsoccer.com forward slash academy. Those wonderful fans still partying, still full of energy. I love it. All game long. 
Mind you, they've got five goals to sing about here. <laughs> Taken by Cheney in the middle. He gets tripped up. Play will continue, waved away by Brandon Stevis, the referee. All played over the top and headed away. See these substitutes that have come off the bench for Fresno with a lot of energy and excited to get in to this match here tonight where they know they might have some opportunity to flourish. Everybody's playing for places as well. I mean, look at Christian Cheney. He's going to try and do better than Chavez and better than Kudos Lawal. And so he's going to put his best showing on. And if you have that in every position and you have all those players trying to outperform each other, that's exactly what you want. And the shot is deflected by Del Campo. And Cooper has it now. It's a lot for a goal kick. Something Adam Smith said was... And he's had a lot of selection headaches, and he said that's kind of a good problem to have when you have so many people trying to get on the field for Fresno. You're kind of seeing it spark its head here tonight. I think every manager would love to have an informed team with informed players and have to have a player come knock on your door and say, why am I not playing? I should be in that team. That's what you want as a manager. It's tough decisions. But you'd rather be making those with a winning team than having lots of players losing and not wanting to play and trying to avoid you and avoid you know, being fit and feigning injuries and what have you. So happy days in the Fresno camp for that man at Chaveri there. Some hard work ahead to try and turn around this, these RGV performances. Fourth loss in a row. And that's going to be a huge concern to Jerson Echeverry. I think that also shows just why Saturday's loss for Fresno was maybe just a little blip in the radar, nothing to read into too much. As they followed up with this performance tonight, ahead of, we mentioned it plenty, Saturday's match with Phoenix right here at Chuck Chansey Park. Plus now eight wins and two draws from the last 10 at home for Fresno. I don't think this is going to be easy for Phoenix coming here. This is a Fresno team that's pumped up, believes in itself, believes in its almost invincibility at home at Chuck Chansey Park. And I think quietly Adam Smith will be thinking, we've got a chance of bringing this 20-match, incredible 20-match winning sequence to an end. I wouldn't bet against it. I think this is the match to watch. At least RGV are trying to look to move things quickly. They're looking to be positive and energetic, which is something small, but something for RGV, uh, RGV fans to hang on to. At least the team is, is battling right up until the final whistle. Ten minutes to go here from Fresno. Foxes potentially extend their franchise record and goal scored for this match, or it would be RGV to maybe bring one back. One moment to look back on here tonight. This one cleared back to the goalkeeper, Corti. Looks like a foul on that pass by Adams. It's a case of seeing, seeing time down now, winding the clock down for Fresno. They've got the goals, they've got the performance, got everything they need. CJ's got his clean sheet. And now for the next sort of nine minutes or so, it's just trying to keep possession, trying to calm everything down, trying to avoid any physical confrontations and late red cards or any craziness. Just be super professional. Here's Adams. And now it's Martin to win it back in the midfield. Looking for Cheney. Uh, 
Had to keep moving them around, making the orange shirts chase, keeping the position. Adam Smith is just pushing them right up until the end here. Keep working, keep doing the right things. You've got eight minutes and a little bit extra to play, and then you can go and relax and put your feet up and take in all the glory of a very, very good victory. And Cooper looking to throw this in. Chavez into the corner, who's on a hat trick tonight. Chavez didn't think that one out. And a throw in here for RGV. Brandon Stevis wants it farther up the field for RGV on the restart. Uh, he wants it from the position where it took place. He says, I don't want you to go and take it from somewhere else, even if it is behind that position. Obviously, RGV trying to speed things up, but good pressure here from Fresno, pushing them back, making it difficult for them to play forward, looking, looking to jump on any errors, which they've just done right there. And there's Casillas, one of the substitutes tonight. Trying to play it forward for Chavez. It did take a deflection, and it goes out for a goal kick. Chavez has been close, and you can feel him maybe trying to inch forward a little bit, looking for that hat trick. And he would have had a hat trick if he'd have taken the penalty that Ali Hatchik <laughs> took away from him. That's what he was saying afterwards. There's a, it's a very tough, tough situation for a coach. Like I say, it's often not your fault, but you're the one who's got to fix it. Flipped over the top and back for Corti. And every remaining game for RGV is against a team fighting for a playoff spot. OKC is the lone team outside of the playoffs that they will still face, along with Portland. There's Salazar now. All those teams so close to that playoff line at the bottom. The shot, and it's saved by Cochran. Kind of a quiet second half for the Fresno goalkeeper, but called into duty and he makes the save. It's a good save, body behind the ball. He's worked hard to keep this clean sheet. He's had a penalty save. He's not gonna let somebody score in the last five or so minutes. It'll do him a world of good to get this clean sheet. It's been 10 since the last one and with the criticism still ringing in his ears from last week at Las Vegas for an error when they were 1-0 up and that allowed Vegas to get back to 1-1. I think he'll be delighted to get a clean sheet and he'll feel very satisfied with his day's work, CJ Will. It's that road match at Sacramento, a 1-0 win on July 3rd, that last clean sheet. When you look at this back line for Fresno as well as you look to close out this clean sheet, a nearly perfect night for them, maybe aside from the penalty. It's almost one back by Cheney. You have to have confidence as a back line, especially with Phoenix waiting to come in here on Saturday. Yeah, I'm sure Phoenix, they will get to see this video, no doubt, both the coaches and the players. And they'll look at this, and I'm sure the team talk before the match on Saturday to Phoenix will be, don't assume anything, don't come in here and expect to win. This is going to be a battle. You're going to have to earn the right to win. And to be fair, Phoenix have been taken on some of the away games. They've been taken right, right to the edge. It's a couple of matches that looked like they weren't going to win them. And they've come through. So and those are teams not as good as Fresno. This is, a, this is the match to watch. If you're a Fresno fan, you've got to watch Saturday. I think this could be the day that Phoenix's winning run comes to an end. We did that game against Las Vegas, and they did get that one goal to eventually get the win, but it was not easy for Phoenix, and it will not be easy on Saturdays. The corner is taken short. And played in for Johnson to the end line, back into the middle, bouncing around. And eventually, the acrobatic shot will roll wide. 
Yep, you almost expect more goals to go in, don't you? They've been going in all game. And again, RGV allowing balls in their box floating around. It's just poor defending in every level you're lying. Look at that, it's a blue shirt unmarked running into the box on the edge of the six yard box. And Jaime Chavez trying the overhead kick. He is desperate to get his hat trick and trying whatever he can do. Have the fans singing, bring on Phoenix. Bring on, F no, I'm kidding, we're not saying <laughs> that, but I wouldn't be surprised if they were. You could start the chance. <laughs> It's going to be a magic atmosphere on the weekend when the top two teams in the West meet. There was a ticket deal where if you bought a ticket here to this match tonight, I think it was kind of a two for one deal. You get a ticket to the Phoenix match as well here in Fresno. Trying to get a huge crowd out on Saturday night. Credit RGV, they're working right up until the end. The one thing you hate to see as a professional, as a manager, is your team give up. And they haven't done that RGV, they're still chasing, they're still trying to win their tackles, and it's gonna be a tough one, 5-0. But as long as you've worked right up until the end, at least you can feel you've done the best that you could do. able to win it back. Here's Rodriguez looking it forward into the empty space that was closed by Martin. And Cochran will clear it away. Now it's Cooper. The left back charging forward again. A few step overs, his shot. Ooh. He was looking for that top right corner. He just steers it wide. That's a lovely run from Alex Cooper. Brilliant, the step overs had the defense floundering. But look, he steps one way, over, over, goes left onto his strong foot, hits it. Wow, that is flying. It's a little bit wide, but it's a beautiful strike. And after what we saw last week against Las Vegas from 25 yards, I thought that one might very well end up in the back of the net from 16 or so yards, but not to be. Sam scored a tremendous goal last week and trying to follow it up here tonight. As we get into stoppage time and it's four minutes of stoppage time to close out this match tonight here at Chuck Chansey Park. Thank you for staying up late with us. A franchise recording goals for the Foxes tonight. up for offside on RGV. So you're going with Jaime Chavez as perhaps the man of the match at this stage? I think you have to give it to him. Mm, be hard to say otherwise, wouldn't it? Kudos to Wall might say, well, hang on a second, I've got two goals, same as Chavez. Should be a good point, but somehow Chavez there, winning the header. It's, that, it's those sort of contributions from Chavez that has been really impressive. He was the one who assisted for Lawal's goal. He's the one in the box who's been winning headers and fighting for the cause. Mickey Daly, we haven't really called the name of either of the center backs, and usually that's a good thing. Give credit to Mickey Daly and Ramon Del Campo. Here's Jackson. Martinez flips it forward. On his 
Right foot, the shot just takes a deflection. Comes away to this near side and Cooper, he was fouled. CJ just applauding, he knows he's two minutes away from a clean sheet. Happy days for the goalkeeper and his defense. And they're in no rush to speed this along. They've got exactly what they want from this game. No doubt Adam Smith, well, he can't applaud them. <laughs> At least he does a one-handed applaud. But I'm sure he'll give them plenty of congratulations after the game because it has been consummate performance, everything the manager could have asked for, and the perfect response to a bad day out at Las Vegas in the last match. One minute to go, and a minimum of four minutes at the end of this 90 minutes. See something here for RGV, the shot. It looks like it did take a deflection wide by CJ Cochran, having to work until the very last moment to preserve that clean sheet. Good save from the goalkeeper, fingertip save around the, the post. You'd expect him to reach it. He was on his toes even in the dying moments of the game. Maybe he's got one last thing to do before this match is over. It's Martinez who will swing this in, right into the middle. Cochran will punch it away for Martinez again. Another one towards the back post. This one will roll out of play, and that might see Fresno to the end of the line for this clean sheet. The scared a few moments ago, and Cochran coming up with a big save. Yeah, I'm pleased for the goalkeeper. He's been so good all season, one mistake last week, and that turned the entire match, and it's a horrible feeling as a keeper. I know it, I've been there, <laughs> I've made those mistakes, and you look around the locker room, and they're all staring at you, and and to come out here and keep a clean sheet and make a penalty save at a crucial time, he'll feel that he has really given something back to his team. And there is the final whistle, all three points for Fresno FC, a franchise record in goals, the first clean sheet in 10 matches, and Adam Smith and Fresno can now look ahead to Saturday, where Phoenix Rising will come to town as Fresno will get the next shot to take down Phoenix Rising. But tonight, successful 5-0 win. There is our man of the match. It's Jaime Chavez. It's brought to you by El Mexicano. A grace for Jaime Chavez, the number nine man for Fresno. And at the end, it does go to Chavez. Good, delighted to see it. I think he deserves it. And he got the assist as well. And he worked really hard. And you can see what his teammates think of his performance every one of them going across to say well done to him. And tonight's moment of the match, it's brought to you by McCarty Insurance. And it is LaWall's second goal of the match. And oh, that was the goal to give Fresno five goals, a franchise record. What a good finish there. As it, as it bounces up, he hits it on the volley. Look, it bounces up there and whoosh, smacks that in the back of the net. Gives the keeper absolutely no chance of saving that. A great look right there. As Fresno finish out a 5-0 win. We'll take one more break. We'll come back to Fresno to wrap things up. It's 5-0 to Fresno here tonight from Chuck Chansey Park. Nil to Fresno FC tonight. Let's take a look at the save to the tonight's save of the game. It's brought to you by BMW, and it is the big penalty kick save 
Stop by and test drive the all new 2019 BMW 3 Series at BMW Fresno. Yeah, well done, CJ. Down quickly to his left, pushes the ball away. Quick reactions, good agility, and a crucial save at a crucial time. And from there, his team went on to dominate and win the match. And here's tonight's Zoom image of the match presented by Zoom Image Solutions. And it's Amir Ali Hajik scoring his penalty kick. You can see how excited he is after backing his second goal in the season. He was excited and Jaime Chavez was nowhere to be seen because they were fighting over who would take <laughs> it. And Chavez wasn't going to go and congratulate him to begin with. But well done there, Ali Hajik. Let's take a look at the full match highlights from this one tonight. Plenty of goals to show you between Fresno and RGV. And right from the start, it was Fresno getting on the board early through Kudus Lawal, his first goal of the night. Yeah, it's a good finish from Kudus at the near post. Jaime Chavez doing so well to win the header and put it in Kudus's path for him to score this goal. Have a look at it. Near post, lots of power from that left foot of his. And there was a chance for the visitors to get on equal footing here. Penalty given away by Zach Ellis Hayden on Beckford. Oof, such a good finish. And now they are really on cruise control at 3 0. And then into the second half, more opportunities would come for the home side. Chavez, his brace. Uh, Chavez again, the ball turned over there in midfield by Ali Hadjik. And he puts it in for Chavez to go 4 0. And then poor defending at a set piece. And Kudos Awal just jumps on this and smashes it into the back of the net. 5-0. So Chavez and Lawal both with a brace tonight. As we take a look at our full match stats, the possession ended up 50-50. And the shots fairly even as well, but five goals to nil tells the final story. <laughs> yeah, you know, some shots can be bad shots versus good shots. It doesn't give you an explanation. All I can say is Fresno were by far the superior side in every facet of play. RGV, very poor, gave up the ghost for most of the match. And they've got some hard work to do to improve things. They really were not good at defending high balls and set pieces, and they paid the price tonight. So 5-0 to Fresno, and that's how it finishes tonight. A franchise record in goals, and up to second place go the Foxes. That's going to do it tonight from Chuck Chansey Park, where Fresno get a 5-0 win. For our entire crew, broadcast partner Gary Bailey, I'm Josh Eastern saying so long from Fresno where it finishes, Fresno 5 and RGV nil. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.